Broadway's My Beat, with Anthony Ross as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway is my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. It's not a street, it's a merry-go-round. Well, you can't tell whether that man in front of you is thinking about a milkshake or murder. Well, that's the street I'm walking. It's around four on a Saturday afternoon when I get to Times Square. I'm standing by the police information center there, thinking how cute the pretty kids, all dolled up and out with their boyfriends. I'm talking to the cop on duty when... Excuse me, officer. Just a second, ma'am. A ma nervous young doll, looks like from the Three I League, a since she's from out of town, comes up to the duty sergeant. What can I do for you? Well, I know this is going to sound silly, but my husband... Yes? Uh, well, he... I, I don't know what's happened to him. You mean he's lost? Well, I hope so. Huh? <laughs> that is, I'd, I'd rather he was lost than run over or... Take it, Danny. Detective Clover, ma'am. Broadway squad. Maybe I can help you. Well, I, I hate to bother you, and I know it's probably all a mistake, but... Yeah? Well, Andy, that's my husband. Uh -huh. He left the hotel just before dinner time, about noon it was, and he said he'd be right back. But now it's after four and hotel. he's not... Yes, the, the Aster, right oh. across the street over there. And yeah. and he's never done anything like this before. And it's our first trip to New York, so I'm scared, maybe. Oh, I know he's probably all right. Oh, what's his name? Andrew Jenkins. He had his billfold with him with his name in it, so if well, he... Well, that's a help, man. And all our money in it, too. Hey, Sergeant. Yeah? Hey, call the precinct. Tell him to check the hospital. A man named Andrew Jenkins. Jenkins. Andrew Jenkins, age... Uh... 27. You got that? Right, Daddy. Hello? Kind of had up the information center. Line Come on inside and sit down, Mrs. Jenkins. Oh, well, thank you. I'm really embarrassed to come here with this story, but oh, I don't... Oh, that's perfectly yeah. okay. It happens all the time. And they always show up after, don't they? <laughs> sure. Say, so where was your husband going when he left you around noon? Well, I don't know exactly. That's the trouble. Well, didn't he say anything that would give well, you an idea? Well, he just said he was going out on a mysterious errand. Huh? But that was just to tease me. You oh. see, today is our wedding anniversary. and well, I'm, I'm sure he was just going out to get me a surprise present. Yeah, sure, sure. Any word, Jen? No checking. How long have you been in town, Mr. Jenkins? Oh, we got here yesterday, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, any friends, relatives in town? No. I mean, no place you can think of where he might have gone. No. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, you do that. Uh, nobody by that name has been received at 3 o'clock, Danny. Mm. Oh, can't you help me? Look, lady, the best thing for you to do is to go back now, to your... No, no, please, don't, don't tell me to go back to my hotel room. I've been sitting there all alone for more than four hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sergeant, mm. call the Aster. Any messages for Mrs. Jenkins, you pick them up. I'm going to take a walking. Walking? Yeah, sure. Come on. <sighs> yeah, a little outdoors is very helpful. Oh, it's maybe not so good as the outdoors in uh, Omaha or uh, Idaho or one of them states like where you come We're from. We're from but, Indiana. Well, that's just as I figured. And you get to town yesterday. Yes. Now, what's the first thing you do? The first thing? We checked in at the hotel. Uh-huh. No phone calls to anybody? No. Well, uh, well, then what did you do? Well, we went out to have a look at Broadway, just a couple of hicks. Uh -huh. No waiting for seats, seating on all floors immediately. No waiting for seats anywhere in the house. Well, which way did you walk? Well, from the hotel, just where we're walking now. Good, good. Now, now, you make like I'm your husband, and you try to remember everything you said to each other. You know, what you looked at, the stores, the people, the movie houses, everything like that. Yes, but... Yeah, now, he went out to buy you a present, didn't he? He's never been in town before. The only stores he sees are these stores along here. Well, which one did he go to? That's what we want to know. So I think. Well, we didn't want to go to a movie, not, not the first night in town. Yeah, yeah, so... And... And then, well, 
I, I remember this nut store. And he said, he said he didn't like the smell of nuts roasting. Yeah, well, that's two of us. And there, we stopped in and looked at this window at the little turtle. Turtles? Yes. Huh. Ten cents a turtle. Write your name on it and send it home. Hey, would he have come back here to buy you a turtle? Uh, no, no. I'll think, Mrs. Jenkins. Yes. Wasn't there something you told your husband you wanted? Something that gave him the idea he should sneak out and buy it? I can't think, Lieutenant. I, I can't think of anything except where is Andy. Yeah, but you've got I, to I, think... I know. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's no good, Lieutenant. Everything I see reminds me of him. Yesterday, I remember how we stopped and looked at this window. All the jewelry they were auctioning off. Lieutenant, what, what's happened to him? Why can't you do something? Did you look at anything particular in this window? Well, what difference does it make? It... Wait, yes, there was something. What? An old-fashioned gold watch. Is it still there? Hmm? Now, what, I mean, do you see it anywhere in the window? No, no, it's gone. Come on. Let's go in. <laughs> All right, 675, another two pistols for seven, and pen and pencil set. Do I hear 675? Going twice at 650. This is 18 karat gold watch, ladies and gentlemen. Guaranteed a lifetime of distinguished use. Do I hear? Sold for 650. Hi, Eddie. Positive, Lieutenant. Hey, could I speak to you a minute? Be right down. Now, don't worry, miss. We'll find out if he's been in here. I hope so. Anything that you know? Well, it could be. Hey, tell your boy to take over a minute, will you? I want to talk to you. Anything for you, sweetheart. Arnie, take it. Okay, Danny, follow me. Uh, what do you want I should be on the lookout for this time, sweetheart? A hot ferry boat? Uh, it's nothing like that, Eddie. Hey, meet Mrs. Jenkins. Oh, a pleasure. We're trying to get a line on a young guy who would have come in here about noon today, Eddie. Uh, describe him, will you, Mr. Jenkins? Well, he, he's about your height, only, only heavier, bigger. He'd and... make him about 27, Eddie, from Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Yeah. Yes. He has brown hair, straight, and hazel eyes. Hazel? You had an old-fashioned gold watch in your window yesterday, Eddie. It's not there now. Well, maybe he came... Uh, I make him. Huh? Not did it. Sure. I make him now. A light gray suit and a green hat. Yes, that's it. It's a screwy thing, Danny. What? This guy, uh, your husband, lady? Yes, do you know where he is? He come in around noon, and he asks about that watch. And just two minutes before... A couple of guys are in asking about the same watch. Two minutes. Less. Yeah, yeah, so what? Sure. I got him tapped. Indiana. Nice-looking young guy. Oh, the watch. Yeah. So both these parties want I should knock the watch down. A real coincidence. So? So? So I knock it down. They're bidding against each other. They both want it real bad. Your husband? A stubborn character, lady. <laughs> yes, well, if he wants something... They bid this watch up, up. Yeah, yeah. I get 62 bucks for it. It's white. I got news for you. It's white, maybe 25, the outside. Huh? How come? Beats me, sweetheart. The bidding's up higher than a cat's back. Yeah, but who got it? The young guy. Your husband, lady. Oh. He got it. Takes it away from me with a grin. If it had been any bigger, his face would have split. He goes out. The other two guys, the guys who's bidding against him, mm -hmm. they go out too, looking pretty sore at each other. They didn't have any more ready cash with him. Then where did he go? Which way did he go? Which way? Yeah. Who looks? I seen the three of them standing out on the sidewalk for a few seconds. All the time, I'm trying to figure what's with this watch. They should get so grabby for it. Then all the three of them head up Broadway together. Together? The young guy, your husband, lady, in the middle. But I don't understand. Why should so he... Is all this around noon, Eddie? Uh, give or take 20 minutes. But I know he doesn't know anybody in New the York. The watch, Eddie. Where'd it come from? Uh, routine, sweetheart. In a consignment from one of the upstate pawnbrokers. Uh, you want... I should look it up, maybe? You tell me. Was there nothing special? You mean, was it hot? Uh -huh. I give you my word, But Andy. why should Andy go with these men? Those men, maybe they killed him or kidnapped oh, him. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Now count to ten, But lady. you don't do anything. Where is oh, he? Oh, look, I'll tell you how it was. He came in here to buy you this watch for your anniversary, right? <laughs> yes, he's feeling good because he got it, right? Oh, like Eddie said, he's grinning. He goes out on the street. Probably he says to these other two, come on. Come on, he says to them, I'll stand your drink. I'll celebrate. Hey, it's his anniversary, too, remember? A very reasonable story. Yes, but... Yeah, but 6 2 and even he's standing in a saloon right now having a friendly dram with his two new friends. But then why didn't he at least call me? 
Well, that's a question to ask him when he shows up. But don't let it louse up your holiday to New York. Sure, and don't stay sore at him, lady. Remember, he bought it for you. Come on, come on. I'll walk you back to your hotel. I just hope that you're right. But I'm scared. I'm all alone. I'm frightened. And now, a message for the whole family. Helen Hayes turns hillbilly. Eve Arden turns another classroom upside down. Lum and Abner add gravel-voiced Andy Devine to the Pine Ridge fun. There will be unusual entertainment on CBS's ten great Sunday night shows tonight, plus the comedy of your other favorites, Amos and Andy, Luigi, and the unbelievable IQs on It Pays to Be Ignorant. So, with the knowledge that you're listening here for mystery... We leave you with a reminder that Sam Spade will be here along with the others later today on most of these same CBS stations. And now, back to Broadway. Any phone messages from Mrs. Jenkins, room 1526, please. No, nothing. Oh, now, just don't get rattled, Mrs. Jenkins. Look, just get used to the idea he's got this one wild oat he wants to stick in the ground, okay? Well, you let me know if you hear anything, won't you, Lieutenant? If there's any report... Yeah, I'll call you before six, and that's a promise. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. Are you leaving now? Uh, just over to get a cigar, Mrs. Jenkins, but, uh, yeah, then I gotta get back to the station house. Don't worry, I'll call you. All right. Goodbye. And just for now. <laughs> Lieutenant Clover, who's the lady I see you with? Hiya, lover. A <laughs> couple of perfectos. If you can stop buffing your nails long enough. What'd you do to her? She don't look happy. Well, you can take warning, Sally. She had a husband, but she let him get away. Mm. Hey, let me use your phone to check in, will you? It's all yours. This is Clover, baby. Give me the precinct. What do you know for sure, Sally? The most exciting thing that's happened around here all day is I got a run in my stocking. Like a cemetery. Yeah. I take my ossified oath. Nobody's even come around to try to get two on the aisle for Kiss Me Kate. Hiya, Sergeant. Lieutenant Clover. Oh, business must be tough. Did you see the fight at the garden last night, Danny? Hold it a second, lover. Homicide? Where'd you say, Sergeant? Mm, get the bloodhound. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll get right over it. Did I hear you say homicide, Danny? Uh, some guy got the business in a hotel basement on 45th Street. Anybody we know? Well, if we don't, it's too late for an introduction. Okay, Doc. Got all I need. Hello, Danny. You got here quick enough. Hi, sir, Doc. Hi, Tom. Uh, good to see you, Danny. Hey, you guys got all the pictures you need. I want to lug this body out of here. Hey, don't bust your buttons, Junior. Hey, is this the fellow? Yeah, stab, Danny. Hmm. Very sharp knife, a stiletto, probably. At least eight inches long. Very neat, professional job. Hmm. Not much blood. Oh, very little, eh? You just left him here, leaning back against the wall. Who found him, Tom? Porter? Yeah, that's right. How long ago was he stabbed, Doc? An hour at the outside, Danny. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he's still a little warm. Hey, Doc. What is it? I know this guy. Yeah? Yeah, you remember... About 10, 11 years ago, the bank messenger who was robbed right here in the district? Right here on 46th Street it was, remember? Yeah, yeah, sure. And we got the two guys who did it but never found the money. This is one of them. Uh, uh, wait, wait a minute, Schultz or Schwartz or something? Uh... Chance was, was his name, Kraut Chance. That's it, Chance. That's it. How about that? He gets it right back here on 45th. Hey, what was with his sidekick, the other guy? Uh, uh, a drug one, wasn't it? You remember. It took you fellows a week to pick them both up. They were sent up the river and Druckmann died in the pen a couple of years That's ago. That's right. And this baby must have just gotten out, paroled. Am I right? You're right. All adds up, Danny. What do you got on him so far, Tom? Well, a clerk said that he and two other men checked in here earlier today, uh, room 503. I've been waiting for you. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Keys. Yeah, this is the one. Oh, what have we got here? Hey, cut those ropes off, will you, Tom? Get him some water, Tom. 
Oh, wait till I get my hands on those... Well, you talk fast, mister. Who gave it a chance? You or your pal? Chance? Gave what? I don't know what you're talking about. Let me get to a phone. Yeah, drink this water. You'll get to a phone when I'm good and ready to let you. What's your name? Just a minute. No, just a minute, Jack. You listen to me. Listen to me if you're a cop. I was practically kidnapped, drugged, tied up, and gagged, and I had a gold watch stolen from me. So don't you get tough with me. I'm going to make a phone call to my wife or else. Say, is your name by any chance Jerkins from Iowa? Jenkins from Indiana. Well, how do you do? You go right ahead and make the phone call, Mr. Jenkins. Coffee make you feel any better, Jenkins? <sighs> well, this is more like it. Yeah, it's good. Now, look, I'd like to let you get upstairs and see your wife as quick as possible. I know you want to go, but first... What happened? Yeah. You want to know, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not too sure myself. I know I bid against those two men for the watch that Grace had said she liked. Yeah. And after, on the street, they suggested they buy me a drink. Yeah, well, then what happened? Well, we went to a bar up the street, and they started to get tough. Oh, shucks, I'd have given them the watch for what I paid for it if I knew they wanted it that bad, but they got tough with me, and I don't like that. Mm, that I learned. So when I said no, I, I guess then's when they doped one of my drinks. Next thing I know, I'm in that hotel room all tied up like you saw me. Now think. Did you hear them talk at all? Talk? Yeah. Yes, yes, they talked. The, the younger one, he was laughing at something the older man said. Uh -huh. Something about how it had been right under their noses all along. The younger one? Yes, and I remember his name, too. The older man called him uh, Druckman. Druckman? What? Oh, never mind, never mind. Go on, go on. What else did they say? Well, then there was something about some gold or something. I, I think they were figuring on getting some money or some gold or something that had been hidden. It, it had something to do with the watch. Words, words. Remember their words. This gold they were looking for, somebody had scratched where the hiding place was on the inside cover of the watch. Huh. Well, now, once they knew where that was... Why didn't they take off right away? Well, they said they couldn't right away. They they said they had to wait for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, but what they said, the words, what was the reason? I, I just remember the young guy laughing and saying something about gold and golden. It was ironical, he said, about the gold and the golden. What was ironical? I don't know, Lieutenant. I was still pretty dopey, I guess. Hey, what was this gold, do you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was the haul on a robbery. $40,000 worth of gold certificates. It was hidden somewhere. Somewhere near here, I'm sure. If only... Anyway, they left me my money. Here. Here, I got the checks. Give it. Oh, well, okay, thanks. The thing that gets me sore, though, is today's my wedding anniversary, and Grace wanted that watch. Yeah, well, I got to get along. Hey, you better get upstairs to your wife. Here. Yeah, let's cut through the lobby. I'll, I'll walk at the elevators. Yeah, I guess I better. I phoned her I was all right, but I didn't mention all this. She worries. If only... Yeah? Well, it's just that I want that watch back. <laughs> if all I had to worry about was a watch. Grace said she liked it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, your elevators are over there. Uh, I, I know. I want to get some cigarettes first. Oh. So, Lieutenant, give... Uh, two packs, please. I hear it was the guy who pulled that robbery back in 38. That's right, Sally. Thanks. You're welcome. Who killed him, Danny? Well, there were these two guys, lover, and looks like one of them didn't want to go splits on the loot. Greedy man. Yeah. Who was he? From what Jenkins here says, it sounds like it must have been Druckmann's son. Druckmann? Who's he? Oh, Shantz's original partner on the stick-up. Oh, by the way, meet Andrew Jenkins. This is Sally. Uh, how do you do? How do you Excuse do? Excuse huh? me. Hotel Astor Smoke Shop, good evening. For tonight? Two tickets? Well, I'll see. For which A cigarette, night? Lieutenant? No, I never use them, oh, thanks. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, yes, sir. Well, if you'll just stop by on your way out, I'm sure I'll be able to arrange it for you. <laughs> you sure gave him the brush. Mm, big spenders. He wanted free tickets to the New Yorker Theater tonight. Free? Mm -hmm. The New Yorker? Hey, there's no New Yorker theater anymore, is there? Oh, I know. It's one of those radio theaters now. 
I can't oh. start trying to remember the new names they give those theaters. To me, the New Yorker is still the New Yorker. The Hammerstein is still the Hammerstein, and the Golden will always be the Golden, and the... Sally. What? The Golden. That's on 45th Street. So was that stick-up. So what? You remember, kid? Yeah, the Golden. Gold in the Golden. No wonder they couldn't go right away. No wonder they had to wait. Today's a matinee day. The theater was full. Oh, what time is it? Not quite 5.30. Hey, what's with you two guys anyway? The matinee crowd will just about be out. Now, you wait in your room, Jenkins, and I'll say... Hey, 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 where do you think you're going? With you, Lieutenant. I'm going to get my watch. But I told Let's you Let's to... go. We haven't got all day. Now, listen, kid. I'm letting you stick around, but don't go getting any ideas you're going to be a hero. <laughs> don't worry, Lieutenant. Hey, you! Where do you think you're going, mister? Is that you, Rosie? It's Danny Clover. Oh, it's you, Lieutenant. Yeah. For a minute there, I thought maybe you were... Hey, you've been on the stage door all afternoon, Rosie. All afternoon, Lieutenant. You think I'm crazy? Stay on the job all the time? No, sir. When the curtain goes up, I'm downstairs taking the little off of those stage hands at gin. How about when the curtain comes down again? Oh, then. Then I'm right back here on the job, Lieutenant. Six bucks richer. <laughs> you see anybody you didn't recognize around here? I mean, anybody had no business being here. Hmm? Huh? Yeah, well, where'd he go? Well, he stood around for a while and... Till finally his girl come out, and then they went... Ah, oh, Rosie, cut the routine. I'm serious. You see anybody around here who didn't belong? Yes, I did, Lieutenant. Yeah. Matter of fact, first I saw you, I thought it was this guy come back again. Uh. There was a young fella by here maybe 15 minutes ago, just when the house was letting out. Tried to slip by me on the stairs down to the cellar. The cellar? Sure. There's a basement here in the Golden... Runs right under the whole orchestra. Lieutenant, they must this be... this guy have slipped by in the last 15 minutes? No. Uh, wait a minute. I had to answer the phone in the office a couple of minutes ago. He could have sneaked down... Why, he I... must still be down there. How many ways to get in the cellar, Rosie? Well, one door back here under the stage. Uh, another door up front in the downstairs lounge, but it's locked. But why should anyone want to get down there? There's nothing but steam pipes, furnace, and all things like that. Show me where the door is under the stage, Rosie. And quick. Is this it? Yeah. But here, let me open the door. Hey, Rosie! Never open a door with a big light on back of you. Yeah. You might as well send the guy in there a special delivery telegram. Yeah, but who would... Never mind, never mind. Turn the light off. Jenkins, get back there by the stairs. You too, Rosie. But listen, Lieutenant, you I... save it. The light. Turn it out, Rosie. Thanks. But we can't see... Yes, you're catching on now. And neither can he. You getting nervous in the dark, Buster? That's four. How many you got left? That makes six. No, you don't. All right, copper. Lieutenant, what happened? Are you okay? I should have remembered he had a knife. He'd used one already today. Hey, where's the light, Rosie? Uh... Come on, get up, you punk. You're not hurt bad. Did he hurt you, Lieutenant? Ah, not a chance, Rosie. What'd he do? Oh, stole that gold watch off of somebody, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Stole this gold watch off of this fella here. Hey, look. Look, have a look, Jenkins. Huh? Look, see? Scratched on the inside cover. Back of steam pipes, north side of Golden. Yeah. Huh. Hey, what are you doing? Just getting a peek at your wallet, Junior. Oh, I'll take charge of this 40 grand, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we thought. Her name is Druckmann. So what? It was your old man that died in stir. It's no secret. I get it now. Before we picked him up for that stick-up, your old man hid the dough 
and scratched where he hid it inside the watch, but he wouldn't tell Shantz, right? He wouldn't trust them. You're telling it. He wanted to wait till they were both out of stir. Then your old man dies, and the prison sends the watch they've been holding to your family. And you're such a bright boy. You pawn the watch. You never knew what it said there. It took Shantz to tell you. He wasn't very grateful to Shantz. A knife in the back. Yeah, oh, but the state will take care of that. Here. Let's get this guy to the station house. And then get you back to your wife. <laughs> I got a surprise for you, Mrs. Jenkins. Andy, darling, where have you been? Happy anniversary, Grace. <laughs> Here's the watch you said you liked. Andy, but where have you been? I knew you were all right. I, um, I was... <clears throat> had a little more trouble getting the watch than I thought I would. Lieutenant, where did you find him? Oh, I, I walked into a room, and he happened to be there. And the man said you paid $62 for the watch, Andy. He said it wasn't worth any more than $25. No, I he... know, honey, but you're... you're... gonna find out that that watch is worth a lot more than 62 bucks, Mrs. Jenkins. Hmm? I mean, when the insurance company cuts your husband in on the reward. Reward? What reward? For what? Andy, where have you been? You know, it beats me, Jenkins. What does? Here's the whole police force, and especially the Broadway squad has been trying to run those 40 G's down for the last 11 years. Yes. 40 G's? And you should excuse the expression. An apple knocker hits town from Iowa for the first time in his life, and in 24 hours, he's done the job. Listen, Lieutenant, we're from... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Indiana, Iowa. <laughs> anyway, they're both in the three I leave. Oh, the sidewalks are really crowded now. At six o'clock. Uh, for me, the day is just beginning. The bright lights reflect green and white and red on the faces of the people. The people laughing, talking, hurrying by. On their way to... To what? I don't know. But chances are I'll have to make it my business when it happens. On the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world, Broadway, my beat. <laughs> Columbia has brought you Anthony Ross as Detective Danny Clover in Broadway's My Beat. With him were Charlotte Holland as Grace, Gene Carson as Sally, Frank Butler as Andy, and John Forsyth as Tom. Others in the cast were Maurice Gottsfield and Tom Hoyer. Broadway's My Beat is written by Peter Lyon. It is produced and directed by John Dietz, and the musical score was composed and conducted by Robert Stringer. This is Byrne Bennett speaking. The suave, charming, and impeccable Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman pay one of their famous visits tonight on CBS's Jack Benny Show. If you haven't heard one of their amazing encounters with Emily Post's Forgotten Man... Well, you've missed a radio classic in comedy. All of these CBS stations will bring you direct to Jack Benny's front door as the Coleman's come calling, well, just about an hour from now, at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time over all these CBS stations. Now stay tuned for The Family Hour of Stars, starring Gregory Peck, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is CBS, Jack Benny's radio address, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>